Hi everyone. In this lesson, we were talking about the signs and symptoms of different types of sleep apnea and why those signs and symptoms occur. Before we talk about the signs and symptoms though, let's talk about what sleep apnea is. Sleep apnea is a general term referring to a condition involving decreased airflow during sleep. Now there are three main types of sleep apnea conditions. One of them is known as central sleep apnea or CSA. The second is obstructive sleep apnea or OSA. And the third is mixed sleep apnea or MSA. Each of these have slightly different pathophysiological mechanisms and each causes slightly different signs and symptoms, which we will talk about later on in this lesson. The prevalence of sleep apnea depends on which type of sleep apnea we are looking at. For instance, with OSA or obstructive sleep apnea, this is estimated to affect around 2 to 9% of the general population, but this condition is likely underestimated. So OSA is going to be the most common type of sleep apnea, and the prevalence of this particular sleep apnea has been increasing over the past several decades due to the increasing prevalence of obesity. And with regards to central sleep apnea and mixed sleep apnea, these are more rare conditions that affect less than 1% of the general population. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms that occur with all three of these sleep apnea conditions. And as we go through each sign and symptom, we will talk about which ones are more likely to occur in which type of sleep apnea. So because we're talking about sleep apnea, we're going to see episodes of apnea. And again, apnea is a cessation or reduction of airflow. These apnea episodes are going to be different depending on which type of sleep apnea a patient might have. For instance, in central sleep apnea, Central sleep apnea is when there is no airflow, so an episode of apnea, that is due to no breathing effort that occurs for at least 10 seconds. So this is going to be a key defining feature of central sleep apnea. So if we were to look at this polysomnography, there is no airflow, but there's no breathing effort along with that decrease or cessation of airflow. So this is going to be something that occurs with central sleep apnea. The patient stops breathing for at least 10 seconds. Now, with regards to the apnea episodes in obstructive sleep apnea, they are going to be different than those in central sleep apnea. So what happens in obstructive sleep apnea is that the patient has decreased airflow due to obstruction with breathing effort for at least 10 seconds. So the reason that they have decreased airflow or absent airflow is not because there is no breathing effort. It is because there is tissue in their airway that is obstructing the airflow. So that is what is the cause of the apnea in obstructive sleep apnea. And this obstruction is going to be due to airway collapse. So when a patient's sleeping, especially when they're sleeping on their back and at certain points of the night, at certain stages of sleep, their muscles become more relaxed in their neck and throat and their airway starts to collapse and air is not able to pass that obstruction. These episodes of sleep apnea in obstructive sleep apnea can occur hundreds of times per night and they're more likely to occur during REM sleep. So if we look at this polysomnography here, again, we see no airflow, but there is breathing effort. And then in the case of mixed sleep apnea, mixed sleep apnea is essentially a combination of both central sleep apnea and obstructive sleep apnea. So what happens in mixed sleep apnea is that there is no breathing effort at first, and then the patient will start to breathe, but they will have issues with airflow due to an obstruction. So it starts out as central sleep apnea and then goes to obstructive sleep apnea. This is essentially what mixed sleep apnea is. It's a mixture of both central sleep apnea and obstructive sleep apnea. And what's important about these apnea episodes is that they can often be witnessed by the patient's spouse or partner. So because the patient is sleeping, they may not even know they're having some of these episodes. So it's important to see whether or not these episodes have been witnessed. And then there is a milder version of apnea episodes known as hypopneas that can also occur. And these are where there is shallow breathing. And in the case of obstructive sleep apnea, there is partial obstruction of the airway. So in the case of hypopneas, the definition is that there is a 30% or greater obstruction of the airway, whereas in obstructive sleep apnea, it is 90% or complete obstruction. So that is the difference here. So you can think of hypopnea as a milder form of an apnea episode. So these can also occur in some of these conditions as well. Now let's talk about some other important findings in sleep apnea. One of them is going to be snoring. So snoring can most often occur in OSA or obstructive sleep apnea and mixed sleep apnea because of that airway obstruction. Snoring can occur in central sleep apnea, although it's not going to be as loud and severe as it is in OSA and MSA. And again, this is due to obstruction and airway collapse. This snoring is going to be loud and chronic. It's going to be bothersome to others. 
And the snoring itself is often going to be disrupted or stopped by a snorting or a gasping or a choking. So snorting can often disrupt or stop the snoring or awaken the patient gasping. Sometimes the patient can be awoken from the snoring, gasping for air. They can have shortness of breath or they can have a choking sensation where that also disrupts or stops the snoring. Insomnia is also going to be another important finding in sleep apnea. So insomnia is going to be related to repeat nighttime awakenings and arousals. So with insomnia can be either difficulty falling asleep staying asleep, or early morning awakenings. So you can imagine that if you're having all these episodes of apneas or having snoring and snorting and gasping, all of these are going to disrupt your sleep and may awaken you from sleep. So patients can often have a very difficult time sleeping and they can also have tossing and turning. And insomnia is going to be worse or more likely to occur in central sleep apnea. Nocturia is also going to be another finding in sleep apnea patients. So nocturia is nocturnal urination. So this nocturnal urination is going to be increased frequency and or increased volume of urine per urination. So in addition to all these other factors that can cause disruption or a poor quality of sleep, patients may also have nocturnal urination that can also disrupt their sleep and cause them to get up many times at night. Now there are some important daytime symptoms that occur with sleep apnea and by far one of the most significant is going to be excessive daytime sleepiness. So this excessive daytime sleepiness is going to be a sensation of feeling drowsy or falling asleep, and it's more likely to occur in obstructive sleep apnea. It's going to be most severe in obstructive sleep apnea, but this can also occur in central sleep apnea to a lesser extent. Mm -hmm. Along with this, there can be fatigue that can occur in sleep apnea. So fatigue, feeling very tired, you can imagine again, because the patient's having many episodes of apnea and hypopnea episodes through the night, and they're snoring, and they're having insomnia, they're going to feel very tired. And what can often be described in patients with sleep apnea is that they have non-restorative sleep, meaning that they feel the same when they wake up in the morning as they did when they went to bed. So there's no restoration. There's no improvement in energy from sleep. And then along with all of this, there can be decreased cognition. So decreased cognition can occur in all types of sleep apnea. This is where there's decreased concentration and decreased short-term memory. All three of these particular symptoms are causes of significant decreases in quality of life for the patient, especially this excessive daytime sleepiness is going to be a very troubling symptom for many patients. And the fatigue and decreased concentration are also going to be very problematic for patients going through their life. Patients can also have a headache as well. So this headache is most often going to occur in the morning and it may be due to snoring from the previous night. So it's going to be more likely to occur in obstructive sleep apnea and mixed sleep apnea, although it could occur in central sleep apnea as well. There can also be morning confusion. So when they wake up, they are a bit confused. This is going to be due to episodes of apnea and hypopnea that occurred through the night. And then some patients can have a dry or sore throat. This is more likely to occur again in obstructive sleep apnea and mixed sleep apnea, and it's due to snoring from the previous night. And the reason that the patient's throat is dry or sore is because the previous night they were trying to get air past that obstructive airway or that obstruction. And then some patients can also have psychiatric disturbances as well. So patients during the day, they can have certain personality changes. They can be moodier. They can have issues with depression and anxiety. If they have underlying depression and anxiety, these symptoms can be worsened. They can also have issues with more acid reflux. So worsening or onset of gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. So they can have heartburn and other related signs and symptoms. And then in some patients, they can have issues with sexual dysfunction. So these different types of sleep apnea can lead to erectile dysfunction and impotence and a decreased libido in some patients. If you want to learn more about other types of sleep apnea, including obstructive sleep apnea, please check out my full lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.